So total protein. So we've established maybe mm-hmm. 0.8 grams per kilogram, which is currently the RDA for protein, probably mm-hmm. lowballing it for most of the po- swaths of the population. I like that. I like that you said that swaths of the population probably missing the mark. Is there a target range that we want to be shooting for? Yes. And there's sort of two tiers to this. So so the first tier would be general population without any extreme types of goals in terms of body composition or athletics. You just want to be healthy. Just want to be, generally want to be healthy. And that range appears to be 1.2 on the low end to about 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. Ideal so, body weight? Sorry to interrupt you. Ideal body oh yeah. weight or what yeah. they currently weigh? That's that's a good thing you bring up because it's technically when we talk about protein requirements, we're just assuming that we're talking about people who are normal weight. So for people who are either severely underweight or severely overweight, you would have to go with in quotes, ideal body weight or your goal body weight or target body weight. So that gets around the idea that, hey, we should we should base protein on on lean body mass. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that would be nice if we could always accurately estimate body composition, but we yeah. but we can't always accurately do that. Mm-hmm. And so a more pragmatic and simpler and just as good way would be to base protein on either I ideal body weight, goal body weight. Um, And of course, if you are at your your goal body weight, then it would be your current body weight. So yes, thank you for bringing that up. So that's for a sedentary individual, someone who's not, let's say, resistance training three, four, whatever times per week. That's kind of the catch-all range for the general population, 1.2 to 1.6. So when, when this second tier of protein intake, it more applies to athletic folks, recreationally athletic folks, people who are training regularly and people, and certainly I would say anybody who's, who's dieting and that would be 1.6 and up. And it's usually we stop seeing the benefits at around like 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight or a full, a full gram per pound. So, so really the, you, you've got this 1.2 1.2 to 1.6 for the general pop uh, with not necessarily concerned with, I guess, fine tuning. And then we've got 1.6 to 2.2 for the more athletic population and and people who are running hypocaloric conditions and, and trying to lose weight. So those are kind of the brackets that we have. And the debates surrounding the higher bracket is that gosh, is that realistic? How do we, how do we achieve that? It's really hard for me to get a gram per pound. Well, you don't have to get a gram per pound. 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight or 0.7 grams per pound of body weight or per pound of target body weight. That's going to cover most people, like regardless of of where you're at on that spectrum, that that 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight appears to be the catch-all, sort of the go-to protein dose if you want to cover everything from preserving lean body mass to making sure you're good health wise to making sure you're good athletics wise it would kind of all converge on that 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.7 grams per pound and actionable as an actionable takeaway here we're probably roughly talking about 30 grams on the low end to 50 grams, maybe on the higher end of protein per meal. Would you say that that's, yes, have I done, have I done my math there? (laughs) Okay. Yes, you did. You did. No, that's, that's correct. So, so the, the other part of the protein conversation, aside from total daily protein intake, it's like what, what's the optimal amount to consume per meal. And that, that varies with the goal because the, the fir- first tier of importance is getting sufficient total daily protein that if you do that you've gotten 80 90 percent of the game sewed up so you're you're you don't necessarily have to worry about the other stuff now the protein per meal question comes into play with folks who like like the elderly who have these just kind of naturally 
counterproductive habits with with regard to protein intake where they just kind of skip their like for example their breakfast protein will be very very small or it won't happen at all there'll be a, a marginal amount of protein at lunch and then dinner is where the the big protein hit comes in and by the time they have that protein they haven't accumulated enough protein through the course of the day to to get their total daily needs so the protein per meal thing can be a concern and a focus for the elderly population, but it can also be a concern for folks who want to, for whatever reasons, just maximally grow muscle. When, when you want to, when your goal is to put on muscle, and that's your main goal, then it can be suboptimal to just think in terms of hitting a total by the end of the day, because some people will have the tendency to just try to get it in in like two meals or in, in some more rare cases, like one meal. But that's not that's not the ticket to, to muscle growth. There is a per meal focus where my colleague, Brad Schoenfeld and I, we wrote a paper called How Much Protein in a Single Meal Can Be Used for Muscle Building. And this is, a, this is an article that's a free, it's an open access from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. And, and you can just Google Aragon, how much protein or Schoenfeld, how much protein. And it should be the first, I know that for Aragon, how much protein it's the first search result. And so we took a look at all the research on what gives the strongest muscle protein synthesis response, like what protein dose gives the most robust acute anabolic response. And it kind of boils down to about 0.4 grams per kilogram of body weight, all the way to about 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. And that's like about like 0.2-ish to 0.3 grams per pound or so. And so, and it comes down to about 30 to 50 grams of protein. And so if you can get that dose you can get that in four times a day, then you would equal this kind of magic range, the 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you had four meals at 0.4 to 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, and that's the way you maximize muscle growth. And that's only because there, there appears to be a ceiling of the acute anabolic response or of muscle protein synthesis seems to hit a ceiling at that dosing range. And I think that this recommendation, certainly for, I mean, I think every woman, irrespective of age, but if particularly if you are in perimenopause and menopause, one of your primary goals should be to, at the very minimum, maintain your lean muscle mass, but ideally add to it over time. But I would say you were describing before sort of these suboptimal habits where the elderly might have some toast or something in the, in the morning. And then they have like the steak or the big protein bolus, let's say last, the last meal of the day. I would Mm -hmm. say that most Americans and Canadians, which is where I am, I'm up in Canada. That is a very, like, it's the bagel, it's the cereal, it's the, it's the muffin with the coffee. This is a very typical standard American, standard Western um, kind of diet. So if we can start thinking about moving the protein bolus, a, a bigger protein bolus, at least in the in the um, earlier part of the day. And I can say as a parent, I also notice that when my kids have protein, if they, get the, if they eat their eggs first before I give them their toast or before I give them their avocado toast or whatever I'm giving them that morning, moods are better focus and concentration at school is augmented and then they're they they get along better they're just not i have boys so there's always a perpetual soccer game in my house so there's they're not fighting each other as much How old as they're your might. boys they're 12 and 10 12 and 10 yeah so they're right. just little right. rascals right which i which i which i which i love right i want to encourage but i find that very it is a very noticeable shift in their emotional regulation and how they interact with with people when they haven't had protein first. First thing in the morning and then also first thing in the meal. So I will hold the rice back. I'll hold the avocado toast back before they have had their protein. 
And then once they finish the protein, they get, you know, whatever they want. And then by the time, you know, my little one also has a little bit of a carb, just like is a carb machine. We'll eat all the cereal if I let him. So it's like, you can have as much cereal as you want, honey, but you just have to have your eggs first. And so when he's done the eggs, magically doesn't really feel like the cereal anymore. Like he'll have a bite or two and then he's full. Yeah, it's, it's, that's a good tactic. And people don't realize the importance of, of getting enough protein just throughout the, the entire life cycle, throughout the different life stages. They'll point to research and all of their point to papers saying that, oh, we got to lower the protein, lower the protein for longevity. And they don't realize that this stuff is based on the fruit flies and, and worms and, and rodents and, and crickets. <laughs> I mean, it's like the, the, the protein and longevity data set is really not a human data set. And there's, there's just observational data. I believe it was put out by Longo and his colleagues showing that through, through the, through the, through middle age or through younger to older or younger to middle age adulthood, the protein needs are lower. And then like from 60 ish, 65 and up, it's suddenly the, the protein needs go up. And this is just observational data. This is not an intervention data. And it's like, well, how about if you kept protein optimal through the whole freaking life cycle? Right. It's just right. like some right. really type of stuff that we're overlooking and we're in denial because there's this whole low protein narrative running through the, the longevity community that it really makes no sense. Yeah, yeah.